Hello, and welcome back to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about being an alpha male in today's society. Where today it seems like the world, the culture is trying to rob you of being who you are. A strong, dominant alpha male that God created you to be. Today, we're going to talk about rebelling against domestication as human beings, as men. When you think of something that's the All right, guys, with that, I am going to plug in the intro bio. If you don't want to listen because you've heard it before or you don't care, go ahead and skip ahead to three, three and a half minutes in, and you should get into the body of the topic today. Who I am, first and foremost, I am a Christian. I make no apologies for that. I grew up in the South, Southeast United States, what most would consider poor. Grew up hunting and fishing and shooting at a very early age. I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I did combat tours, plural, in Iraq. After that, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps. After the Marine Corps time, I went to work for LAPD, where I worked regular assignments and more specialized assignments. I've also been a private contractor for the federal government. I've also served the United States Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I have been a state rifle and pistol champion in a few different states a few different times over. I started shooting shooting competitions even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I am very blessed to have all those talents, and I am very blessed that God got me through everything that he's gotten me through alive and in one piece and made it back safely when a lot of other good men did not, not because of anything that I am but because of who God has made me and because of how much God has protected me and sheltered me. I have served as the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area where our primary job is to stock active shooters. I've hunted and fished all over this beautiful country, everything from whitetail on the east coast and mule deer on the west coast and elk and bear and wolf and exotics and buffalo. I've been a professional hunter and guide, professional firearms instructor, FBI certified, NRA certified, other three-letter government agency certified, professional firearms instructor for a lot of years. And as I mentioned first, the most alpha thing about me is I am a follower of Jesus Christ, the ultimate alpha male. With that being said, we'll get into today's topic. Domesticated. What comes to mind? Something weaker. Something more docile and predictable, less dangerous, and less intelligent. Now you can look up studies, and there are studies that show the shrinking of brain size, especially in something like cattle. When we domesticate cattle from their wild ancestors, their brains get smaller, in addition to them becoming more docile, more predictable. Also look at the way they're shaped. Look at like a wild bison versus a domestic cow. Rebel against that domestication. God calls us to have dominion over the animals of the earth. We are to rule over them. God said, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moves upon the earth, and upon all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. It is also written in the book of James, For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But you're not called to be tamed. You're the alpha male. You're the one in charge. You are called to have dominion over the beasts. They were put in subjugation under you, but you were made in the image of God. God made you in his own image. That's not said about any other creature. You are different. You are set apart. Now you are called... To obey and give reverence and honor and fear to God. That's the divine order. But it also that you were placed over the other creatures. And as that alpha male. Strong. Dominant. In control. Rebel against the domestication. That is prevalent in today's society. We'll look at this in a couple of different ways. To reclaim your manliness. To rewild yourself. And what we're eating in our diet. If you go back to those cattle and a lot of domestic animals, something like a cow that eats wild grasses and wildflowers and whatever else has a variety in their diet, 
We take them, we domesticate them, we feed them corn and soy and things that they weren't meant to mostly eat. Their brains become smaller and they become weaker. Likewise, you, be circumspect. Turn over the food that you're eating, look at the label and read it and see if that's stuff that you should be eating. Or if you're being domesticated. Your diet's mostly corn and soy, trying to make you fat and docile and produce estrogen like a domestic livestock. To be tamed and controlled. Do you want to be a strong, dominant alpha male warrior or like a domestic cow? Just eating whatever's put in front of you. Eat what you were meant to eat. Meat off the bone. If you've listened to a lot of my podcasts, you know I'm all about hunting and getting your own food and foraging. And I get that you can't always do that. If you have a chance to go hunt and get an animal, kill it and butcher it and eat it for sustenance, I'm all about that. But I know that not everybody can do that, but you can mimic that. Get some meat on a bone and throw it on a fire. Meat, stick, fire. If that, maybe just meat on fire. You know, can you take a heap of coals, even if you're in a city, take some wood or take a heap of coals and just throw a big hunk of meat on it and roast it and eat it like a man. Go out and find some wild nuts. And if you can't, buy some whole nuts and crack. And I'm not telling you what to do as a dentist or whatever, but I'll often just get nuts and crack them with my teeth and eat them. Or if you're going to eat peanut butter, you don't have to make a sandwich with it. Take a spoon or take a stick and break it off and shove it in the peanut butter and eat it. Be a man. Now, I'm going to temper this. Don't act like a crazy person. But I was recently in the supervisor's office doing work. um, And I had a jar of peanut butter. And I had, I I think, a knife stuck in it. And I was eating it. And they were like, are you eating knife? Are you eating peanut butter out of a jar? And I said, yes. Yes, I am. And they looked at me and they said, that's awesome. Fat and protein. Without all the frills or without a bunch of high fructose corn syrup shoved in it. Likewise, what are you feeding your mind? Just like there's junk and garbage food, there's junk and garbage that you feed your mind. And I'm all about stuff for entertainment. Hopefully this podcast for you is entertaining. But is it just garbage? Is it the kind of just non-reality, called reality, TV show garbage that has no educational, spiritual, moral benefit at all? It's the mind equivalent of high fructose corn syrup. Just empty mental calories. And there, there's a time to rest and there's a time for recreation. There's a time to just watch movies for enjoyment. I totally get that. But you should also be circumspect like what you're eating and putting in your mouth, what you're putting in your mind, what you're looking at, what you're spending your time looking at healthy and holy, edifying, making you a better alpha male. Are you just being force-fed crap that people call entertainment? Mwah. Numbing your brain like a domestic cow. For Jesus himself says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Be careful what you're watching. Don't just mindly shovel down whatever is put in front of you, whether it's food, whether it's TV programming. What is it programming you for? To think, to be a critical thinker, to be an alpha male, or to be a domestic animal with a hive mind. Next, let's talk about hygiene. Now, I'm going to temper this. I'm not telling you to walk around and smell like a homeless person. What I am going to tell you is there's nothing wrong with smelling like a man, like a strong, dominant man. There's so much marketing, just like your force-fed advertisement for food, advertisements for entertainment, advertisements for hygiene. Look at all the crap that men spend money on you know, body wash and dish soap and fabric softener and shampoo and conditioner, body spray, whatever that is, cologne, friggin' Tide Pods. Men, you need two things to be clean. Water and if needed, soap. And by soap, I mean real soap made with fat and salt. That is what you need to be clean. All the other stuff is marketing. I'm not saying you can't use cologne every once in a while for a special occasion or something like that. But like I said, turn over the food label and read it. Turn over the soap labels and read it. Most of it is stuff you can't pronounce like dilaurol sulfate. And if you look like the body wash, the shampoo, the stuff you use to wash your dishes, it's all the same stuff. It's all got the same active ingredients, the same thing in a different bottle. 
You're buying who knows how many bottles of the same crap in different marketing that you don't need, spending money, and more importantly, spending your time and energy on it. Like I said, don't walk around smelling like a homeless person, but it's okay to smell like a man. You're a man. You're not supposed to smell like flowers. I'm not pretending that I know everything about women or that I completely understand women. I'm very blessed to have a very wonderful, very beautiful, very smart, intelligent wife. A great gift from God. But I know this about women. Women aren't turned on by the smell of flowers. Women are turned on by the smell of strong men. And it's okay to get dirty and sweaty. And when it's time, get clean with soap and water. All the other stuff is just a waste of marketing and time and energy and money. Am I saying you should never use it? I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's unnecessary. Ask yourself this. Do you have it? Do you think you really need it or you even want it? Or because society says that you should have it? Or because some advertising thing says it's important or necessary? Don't get me started on other stuff like fabric softener. Fabric softener? Fabric is soft. You don't need to soften it. How fragile is your skin? You need to soften fabric to put it on your body as a man? Give me a break. Now I'll go off a little bit of a tangent. I know that women, this is not a bad thing. Men and women are different and that's a beautiful thing about us. It's what attracts us to each other. We are different and have different qualities. And women do have a thing for civilizing us. I'm not against civilization. And women have a way of tempering us and that's not a bad thing. Especially when we need it. There was a time when my wife would come visit me. I was literally living out in the woods. Literally, you know, killing animals and eating them. Sometimes cooking them, sometimes not. Or fishing, or foraging. Basically reading my Bible, praying, doing ranch work, hunting, killing stuff, eating it, working out. And she was away for a while and came back. And I realized, yeah, you know what? For my wife's happiness, I should probably be a little bit more civilized. And that's fine. But don't think you have to be like a woman. Don't think you have to smell like freaking flowers or use fabric softener or put peanut butter on bread. If you want salt and fat and protein, eat salt and fat and protein. You don't have to put it on bleached white Wonder Bread. There's a time to sit down with your wife or the person that you're dating to become your wife. Have a nice meal. That's great. There's also nothing wrong with taking a piece of meat off a fire and putting it in your mouth. All right, man. Next, let's talk about... Getting physical, getting aggressive, getting dominant, even being dangerous. Today's culture and domestication tries to beat that out of you. But make no mistake, there is real evil in this world. A quote that I like, I can't remember who said it, is the best thing an unarmed man can do is flee from evil, but evil is not overcome by fleeing from it. If I said those words and you got a negative connotation, question whether you're being domesticated. A Navy SEAL team... Going in to fight terrorists, do you want them to be aggressive? Do you want them to be dominant? Do you want them to be dangerous? Likewise, men or women, if you're listening to this, if somebody breaks into your house, home invasions are a real thing. In the 15 or 20 minutes it's going to take for the cops to likely show up, do you want that man or if you're that head man in your family, do you want to be dominant and aggressive and dangerous? Or do you want to just stand there? So it's okay to seek out and be aggressive, be physical. Those things can be bad if they're done for the wrong reasons. But if they're done for the right reasons, they can be equally good. Whether it's getting physical, getting aggressive at the gym, in a discipline, in a sport, in a competition, with the pavement, on a run. Think about this. People might say that I work out a lot or too much or like an insane amount. On days when I work less than 12 hours, I do two workouts a day. My workouts vary from longer to shorter. Let's say in general, a good average is two and a half hours a day. Two and a half hours a day is almost exactly 10% of my day. 10% of my day doing fairly strenuous physical activity. And not even that much because if I'm doing weights, I'm generally resting in between sets. But let's, for the sake of argument, say 10%. The other 90% is spent doing not super strenuous physical activity in general. And, and, you know, the occasion I have to get into a fight at work or something or physically restrain somebody or something like that. But that's not most days. So in general, 10% of the day. Look at whatever the general guidelines are for exercise for an adult male in America. Those are like the minimum guideline in general. You don't keel over and die for a domestic animal to keep moving and keep producing and not be a burden on the system. But not the amount you need to be at peak performance, to be a dominator, to be an alpha. Doesn't matter how much money you have or how much 
physical prowess you have right now, start doing something physical. Start being physical. Start being aggressive. Start being dominant. Whether it's just on a run, push. Push yourself. Push yourself to be better. Whether it's with a stack of weights, pushing yourself to do more than you could do before. It's okay to be strong and dominant and aggressive in a good, healthy, constructive manner. Men, especially in America and today's culture, and this may not apply to you if you have a manual labor job. Even me who has a semi-manual labor job, I would not think that I get all my physical activity that I need from my job. Men, you are not called to live in a cubicle. That is not a natural environment. It's a natural environment for a domesticated man, but not for a dominant alpha male. Likewise, you, young men, who are in school, who are learning. I have nothing against learning or education. But question whether it's natural and good to be sitting in a chair for hours and hours on a day. So sedentary. You see the rise in all these psychologically and behavior altering mind drugs that we give young men. And I'm not a doctor. I'm sure that some of those young men do actually have physiological or mental issues that may warrant those. But look at how many young men today are put on medication for ADD, ADHD, whatever, whatever. Look at the giant rise since we started making them sit down for hours and hours on end in a sterile, unnatural environment and ask, have those young men really changed so much in such a short amount of time? Has they physiologically changed so much? Or are they just in an unhealthy, unnatural, domesticated environment that they were not created to be in. I'm all about education. I'm all about discipline. I'm all about following orders. But use some critical thinking, the brain that God gave you, and find where the problem lies. Next, we'll touch briefly on speech. Now, we talked about that quote earlier from Paul. For every kind of beast and bird... Of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. And that certainly applies to me. Another verse that is helpful, Proverbs 17, Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent, and discerning if they hold their tongues. No, I'm not perfect in speech, obviously. And obviously, I'm speaking to you here. And obviously, speech is a great thing and a wonderful gift God's given us to communicate with each other. But just like we're talking about garbage that you consume in your mouth and garbage that you consume with your eyes, you can also speak garbage out. Does Jesus not say it's what comes out that defiles? So be careful what you say. Speech, just like we talked about with aggression and dominance, is neither good or bad in itself. It is neither good nor evil. It is not malum in se. It is not evil by nature. It can be a great good and a great blessing. One short thing I'll say about being a strong, dominant alpha male. It's not the man that's constantly putting down other men. That does not speak of strength or dominance or being in control. That speaks of being weak and insecure. If you really are an alpha, if you really are the strongest, most dominant, then help others be strong too. There's that old saying, the strong silent type for a reason. Like we were talking about earlier, there's a difference between being domesticated and being civilized. If you think of one of the very early great civilizations, the Greeks, out of that in that culture, the Spartans. Now, the Spartans were civilized. They came out of one of the very early civilizations. I don't think anybody would call them domesticated. They were aggressive. They were dominant. I don't think anybody would argue with that. They were dangerous. They also were known. One of the other meanings for the word Spartan is to means to be. You'll see references to Spartan speech or Lyconic speech, meaning Simple, frugal, austere, brevity of speech. Do you think it a coincidence that those great warriors that often come to mind when you think of an alpha male were also very direct and deliberate in their speech? Now, obviously, the Spartans came and went long ago, and a lot of those ancient cultures were not exposed to the Word of God, to the Bible, only in in general revelation. That Greek culture later did, we learn about in the New Testament in the later books of the Bible, come to know the ultimate alpha male, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God made man, much more than a man. The most famous, the most historically influential man that ever walked on this earth, by whom we even differentiate time as before Christ and after Christ. Think about his characteristics. Think about him. Think about who he was. He is our ultimate example as an alpha male. The last thing we'll close on that ties in. Jesus is often found among civilization helping people and in cities. But it is also 
many times recorded that Jesus went out to the wilderness to pray. He went out to the wilderness, to the desert places. You likewise, if you want to resist domestication, the man you were called and created to be, you need, may need some time in the wild, perhaps alone, in a more natural environment, away from the culture trying to domesticate you and force feed you junk food and junk entertainment and junk marketing, because that will never fulfill, that will never fulfill you in the things that are really important. For it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We are not like the animals like we discussed earlier. We are made in the image of God. We may domesticate animals, and it may even be good for them. It keeps them safe. It gives them you know, a known quantity of food and diet. But we are different. We are made in the image of God. We yearn for something more. As the Bible says, we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. If you have a hunger in your soul and your spirit, if you know that you are made for something more and nothing, none of that marketing, none of that junk food, none of that junk entertainment is fulfilling you, you still feel a void and emptiness, that's because none of that stuff can fill that void. No amount of money, no amount of stuff, no amount of popular culture. That hole in your soul can only be filled by something greater, by God and a relationship with Him. With that, man, I'm going to wrap up this episode. If you like this podcast, you may also like a few others that we do. The Important Stuff, Simple Man Sermons, The Preachings of a Simple Man, Called by God to Share the Good News of Jesus Christ. If you're into guns and tactical stuff, you may also like Gunfighter Life, pretty self-explanatory. If you like this content, please consider sharing it with people that you know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It really does help. At least from what I hear in the algorithms on wherever platform you're listening to this to, it probably will help others notice the podcast. If you wanna if you're a more visual person, you wanna check out some other stuff, you can go to goodshepherdtraining.com. It's the umbrella for all those podcasts. You can also check out Good Shepherd Training on Instagram, on Facebook, and again, goodshepherdtraining.com. If you wanna support financially because podcasts aren't free to produce and put out, you can go to Good Shepherd Training on Patreon. Check us out there. You also get access to some insider content. You can ask me questions. If you think by God's grace, I'm able to be able to use some of the things that I have. Give advice. Thanks, guys, and have a blessed day.